Sound waves move at an incredibly quick rate, 760 miles per hour in air, if you were wondering. If there was nothing in your head, sounds would come in one ear and fly out of the other faster than you would believe. Luckily, there is something crucial in your head that prevents this. Your brain. When your brain receives sounds, you hear something, something for you to interpret. With this in mind, what would you call a series of pleasant sound waves? Well, music. Some people will leave the definition there and just label it noise, but think of your favorite song in your head right now. Maybe the lyrics helped you through tough times. Maybe you have a special memory with it. Maybe you just love the way it sounds. In any case, do you really think it's fair to reduce that to a collection of sounds? I don't think so. Music is so much more than that. For example, it can bring people closer. It can help you fall asleep. It can make holding a call a little more bearable. It can set the mood in a movie or make you feel like you're in a movie, even if you're just getting ready in the morning. Most importantly, though, it brings emotion out of you. Why should you care, though? Well, music is a universal experience. Have you ever met someone that's never listened to music before? Neither have I. Despite this, too few people recognize just how powerful music really is. I don't blame them. Things are happening behind the scenes of your mind every time that music plays, which is exactly the beauty of it. Let me share with you the power of music so you can recognize and harness it for yourself. I say harness because it may not always be beneficial and you should be aware of how to keep it in your favor. Recently, I was assigned a mini project in my literature and composition class about what we believe made music great. I'm obsessed with music, if it wasn't obvious by now. So I jumped at the opportunity to forcibly indulge my classmates in my music expertise. However, as I dug deeper into my section on emotional impact, I realized I wasn't as much of an expert as I believed I was. It got to the point that I had to remove a lot of the research that I found from my presentation. Luckily, you are now the forcibly indulged classmate. Let's begin by giving music the credit it deserves. Have you ever been in a great mood and you turn on some music? Your mood was likely elevated and you wanted to sing or dance, but why? Well, studies from all around the world have shown how listening to happy music releases dopamine in your brain. Dopamine is a chemical that makes you feel good. Many people just want to turn on music to hype themselves up or jam out without realizing they're starting chemical reactions in their brain. What's the best part about this? They didn't put in any effort besides, press, besides pressing play. On the contrary, have you ever been in a bad mood and you turn to music? This likely wasn't because of uh, happy music. I think we can all agree we don't want to listen to an upbeat song when we're down in the dumps. Either way, your mood was likely alleviated. Melancholic and sad music produce some fascinating effects, such as releasing prolactin when you listen to it. Prolactin is a chemical that helps to cope with stress, explaining why you might feel comforted or relieved. It's a sort of auditory catharsis. You can let go of your emotions in the same way you can by crying, except tissues aren't necessary. This has been proven to help many individuals with depression, but we'll return to sad music. Are you still not satisfied? Well. Let me tell you about the medical power of music. It's recognized by John Hopkins and the American Psychological Association as a powerful tool for therapy purposes. One of the primary examples of this is speech therapy for those with a traumatic brain injury. Because these brain injuries are often in the left side of the brain, which controls speech, music therapists start patients off by singing, which utilizes the right side of their brain, and it allows them to speak a little bit. It's astounding to see how music can be, serve as a pathway around obstacles. It may not even be for those with a pressing problem, per se. Re newborn babies and their parents are understandably stressed. New researchers at Beth Israel Medical Center tested three different ways of calming babies. One was a gato box, which simulated the sounds of the heartbeat. Two was an ocean disc, which mim mimicked the sounds of the womb. Finally, they tested singing from the parents. What do you think was the most effective? While they were all good, singing was found to be the most effective. Not only was it the most effective for the babies, it also calmed the parents. That's a twofold positive. Researchers at McGill University even found that listening to music before surgery was more effective in reducing anxiety than taking prescription drugs. It is that powerful. I'm sure that many of us can relate to the anxiety and stress felt by the subjects of these studies. Just like them, we can reap benefits from music. However, 
there must be some moderation, just as with all things in life. And I'm not just talking about listening to music that's too loud. We've all heard that from our parents, right? Well, listening to songs with depressing lyrics continually over a long period of time may hurt some people's state of mind. Rumination is a tendency to stay stuck on negative emotions and is a trait common among those with depression. These are the people that are most susceptible to this kind of listening. While listening to sad songs can help cleanse you of your sadness, listening to these songs over and over and over may start to hurt, crack at their way of thinking. An over-dependency on music was also found to cause some people not to search for other sources of help. Remember, music is not your therapist and won't solve your problems. It is only a powerful outlet. Outside of happy and sad, songs with aggressive lyrics have been tied with similarly aggressive thinking. Let me reiterate that this does not mean that sad songs are inherently negative. Just like with talking about your struggles and pain to another person, while negative is not a problem until it's all that you talk about. If you feel yourself in a routine of negative emotions, think about what you listen to on the daily. Could these songs use more uplifting lyrics and upbeat rhythms? You'd be surprised what happens when you change what you listen to with intention. Two studies by Knox College tested if the explicit attempt of being happier was effective. One was long-term and the other short-term. They used music for this, positive music to be specific. Both studies found that listening to music coupled with this intentional attempt of being happier was very effective in improving mood in both scenarios. Music has been part of our past, present, and most definitely future. Music therapy is still a relatively small field that will continue to grow as we, as we learn more and more about how music affects, affects our brains. Now that you know the science behind music, go out and let, its work, let it work its magic. Observe how you feel yourself change. Next time you're looking for a mood booster, don't hesitate to turn on some music. And don't worry, you don't have to be an expert. Music and your brain do all the work for you. Thank you.